So I was having dinner last night with an admissions officer from a top business school. And I asked for fun, what are the most common postgraduate application mistakes you see? And without bringing in pilot, they just reeled off five frustrating mistakes they see all the time. Now, I've added a couple more of my own in this video to bring you the most common postgraduate application mistakes that will torpedo your chances. Now, the number one mistake is the never ending CV or resume. You are allowed up to one page for an MSc, potentially two pages, and slightly more for a PhD or research proposal. But for the vast majority of applications, just the one page. This is something that needs to be digested in just 10 seconds. I recommend no more than three bullet points per work experience, and ideally just one or two. Less really is more. All you want on your CV is five to eight really strong points, good grades in individual modules, and maybe good examples of work experience and what you've learned or achieved, and a couple of extracurriculars. Those eight points are all that you need to be digested, and adding more and more and more less good points is going to make the reader less likely to see the strengths that will get you in. So keep it short, keep it one page, and if in doubt, cut it. The second mistake we see is deadline panic. This is when someone sees a round or a deadline and they rush an application. Now a rushed application is a rejected application. It is almost always better to wait a couple of weeks and get everything in order. That's not just the research that you'll be putting in to make your statement excellent, it's also making sure you've got a good reference on board, your CV and transcripts are all together, and you've thought about the interview preparation if your course interviews. I often advise people to avoid the first application cycle for courses with deadlines because that's when you're going to be competing against people who've worked with an expert such as myself for over a year and they know exactly how to hit all of that hidden mark scheme. Usually aiming for those middle cycles is a slight strategic advantage because the applications are slightly weaker in those cycles. So don't rush it take your time and make it the best it can be. It's highly competitive out there. Many of these courses have acceptance rates as low as 5%, so you really need to be putting the time to make sure that your five to eight strengths really sing. One that might surprise you and that the admissions officers have told me again and again is the reason why they reject otherwise strong applications is poor references. This is particularly common at the postgraduate level. Now, some courses such as London Business School just require one professional reference. Most people can find a pretty good professional reference. They tend to be a bit easier to get. But a course such as London School of Economics would expect two academic references, unless you have more than five years of work experience, in which case you can supplement one of those academic with a professional reference. This is difficult to achieve. You have to have two people at your university who know who you are and think you are brilliant. Now, if you've got a bit of time for your application or you're still at university, I recommend you start a charm offensive. Go to class early, sit at the front, do your homework, ask your questions and go to office hours. Build a relationship with your personal tutor or your top scoring and strongest module grades because these people are going to make the difference between you getting in and not. What you're looking for is someone who's going to write the magic words that postgraduate officers need to see. Those are in order. I highly recommend this candidate for any postgraduate course. And ideally, the cherry on top is they were in the top five, 10% of my cohort or even better, they were the top student of my cohort last year. Top academic institutions really want excellent and the best candidates, and those words can carry more than maybe anything that you can write on your own personal statement. So don't underinvest in references, take the time to identify the person who knows you best and is most likely to write something glowing about you. My next tip, and a major frustration, is to avoid copy and paste errors. If you're applying to LSE, don't put LBS in the first line. If you're applying to UCL, don't mention Imperial. And if you're applying to Oxford, 
do not mention Cambridge on your application. Make sure you get somebody else to proofread your application before you submit it. Otherwise you will get a very fast rejection in frustration. My next tip is for courses that interview, which is increasingly common at the university level, particularly since the pandemic, the rise of the pre-recorded interview that doesn't require anybody to actually meet you to conduct that interview. A lot of people think that they are above average at university interviewing because they think interviewing is just talking. No, interviewing is an oral examination. And like any examination, you must prepare, prepare and prepare again in order to smash it. It takes time getting used to looking at the camera, smiling and thinking on the spot, what are your best strengths? Better than if you predict the top questions, we've got a bank of over 200 past pre-recorded and Kira prep interview questions. Practice the most common ones, practice speaking about them in just one minute or 90 seconds. That's as short as you're going to get in these pre-recorded interviews and make sure that when one comes up that you've rehearsed, you can smash out the park and help to get yourself an offer. Don't leave it from the night before and don't think that you're above average interviews. It's a difficult skill and it takes a lot of time to practice to be competent and good and convincing. My next tip and my personal bugbear is to avoid fluffy or verbose answers. I see hundreds of drafts each year which were clearly written the night before and it is obvious. It is because they do not include the specifics and it is the specifics that get you into a university. Many people are right, I want to move into data and AI to help companies transform and make the most of new opportunities. It doesn't mean anything and it's actually harming your application. Instead, a top candidate who's done their research might sound more like this. I'm applying to data science courses because I'm interested to see how companies such as Kandar are applying AI in their solutions to businesses. For example, one case study shows that they are creating marketplace solutions in order to automate the information to thousands of vendors around the world, leading to a 12% increase in their online sales. Talking about the company, the case studies, the research, saying a specific role title, in that case being a solutions architect on their graduate scheme, is far better than just saying what you want to achieve without actually demonstrating you've done any research or have any understanding of how to achieve that. Use the specifics. Look at your course modules and electives. Look at who's teaching them and what you're gonna learn from them. Look at the career you want to take and the companies and the roles and the opportunities that will be afforded to you from this degree. Put all of those specifics into your statement and you will multiply the chances of getting an offer from a top school. Now my final tip is to do your university research. At the postgraduate level, you can apply to each course individually. So unlike the undergraduate level in the UK, you can put in school course specifics. At the postgraduate level in the UK, you can put in university research. Because you're applying to each course individually, you can tell, for example, LSE, which electives you want to choose. Or you can tell UCL in a different statement, which societies and lecturers you're most likely to engage with. Do your research. I recommend at least three electives, at least two societies, if you can, a lecturer and maybe even their research area, and ideally another opportunity. Many masters have these amazing global immersion field trips or these lab entrepreneurial ventures you can get involved in. The more specifics you put into your application, the higher chance you are to get an offer because you've aligned what you're going to get from the course with the motivation as to why you are undertaking the course. Now, that's just a small selection of the common pitfalls that torpedo postgraduate applications, as told by a leading business school university officer. If you'd like to work with someone like myself to learn how to avoid these tips, but also what you need to include in your applications to give you the highest chance of success, please do contact us using the information on screen now and in the video description below. We'd also like to offer as much help as we can for free. So we have an exemplar personal statement you can download in the link below. 
And if you would like to help out the channel, please do like and subscribe and leave a comment. I get back to as many comments as I can. Most importantly, good luck.